Welcome back to the Guardian with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Happy that you are partaking in the program today. As we talked about in the first segment, Holly, watering. Important to do it right means a healthy, happy, productive garden and a happy gardener. Tree Diaper can help you with that. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No more overwatering, underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees when they are down, uh, when whether they are by the house, down the road, or in the back forty. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find all the sizes they have available, tr- available at treediaper.com. That's treediaper.com. All right, uh, herbs, Holly. One of the um, well. Maybe not one of the easiest plants in which you can grow in your garden, but maybe one of the most valuable ones you can grow because of the high pricing, the the, the, the s- small sprigs cost in the store. Right. Um, herbs are definitely something that could be a challenge at times to grow. But like Joy had said, they are, if you can get them to grow and right. if you can do it successfully, you're going to save money, especially if you use a lot of fresh herbs or you want to dry your own herbs or freeze them or put them in olive oil in your freezer, whatever you like to do with those herbs or you can or whatnot. Um, they are going to, especially things like basil, basil is just seems like that's ridiculously fresh to buy from the store. And if you like to make pesto or something, I would highly recommend growing your own basil. Um, but with that being said, they well, are cheaper well, to grow than, right. than to purchase. And and if you're have, if you are an individual that have, di- has difficulties in starting, plants from seed right now is the best time you can possibly be a gardener right now who likes to grow herbs because you can go to the garden center yeah you're going to pay a little bit of a premium to get your basil your oregano your thyme plant starts at your garden center but if you do it correctly and we've got many videos and many people have great videos on how to successfully grow herbs year round you can put them in a hanging basket in your kitchen or in the back porch and bring it in during the winter and that plant will continue to grow for many months on end uh, instead of just buying you know what you bought at the store two times the plant will pay for your, itself over the course of a month and it will grow for 6 months we've had uh, rosemary uh, growing in our window at one point for almost, uh, what, a year and a half, I guess it was? I think it was a little bit longer than that, but yeah. It so, can be done, and it's a low-light plant. Right. So that's another thing I was going to say is that you can grow them pretty much anywhere, and it's a very low-light plant. So Ex- Explain to what low-light means. It doesn't mean dark. No. It means, like, it, they'd be okay in a north-facing window, essentially, growing herbs. Um, so if you have a, a window that doesn't get a ton of light or an east-facing window, something like that, it's going to do just fine. A lot of people, I know you'll you'll see these window herb gardens, especially um, right now. You'll see them at all sorts of stores, and people are probably like, "Is this a gimmick?" Blah blah blah. No, you can you can grow those little mini herb gardens in your uh, kitchen windowsill or whatever, and you, for the most part, should have success. And it's not. Um, but they are kind of grow anywhere. Right, but the plants, if put in full sun, will do fine as well. I mean, oh, yeah. most plants love full sun. There are some shade-loving uh, perennials in, uh, in in the flower world that prefer the shade. But herbs, we grew a whole bed of herbs last year, uh, dwarf basil, Italian basil, uh, opal basil, and they were in full sun and did very, very well. Right, and that's something to, to definitely um, keep in mind is that you can – you can grow a whole bed of basil. And you can start it. Go ahead. You can start it from seed. Right. And if you are like, I don't like any of these other herbs and this is all I want to grow. You refer to you the can, basil, you mean? Yeah. Well, or whatever. Whatever. It right. Be. Well, let's. basil has umpteen different type of flavors in with cinnamon, chocolate, uh, lemon, lime, and, and the list goes on and on in different flavors. And, and they actually taste like what they are described as yeah um definitely even the um what's it called the licorice basil has yeah, a licorice, licorice tang to it or maybe you do a lot of asian style cooking where you want to do a thai basil that's um that's something you can grow too so you have a lot of options just w- with basil alone now one thing to keep in mind is that when you start these 
from seed, whether you direct sow them or something like rosemary, you might um, start in a container. You want to keep in mind the germination time. Uh huh. Yeah. So rosemary takes, what is it, 21 days? Rosemary can take up to 30 days. So if you're not a patient person, uh, rosemary may not be the thing for you. Uh, taking up to 21 to thir- up to 30 days to germinate. Now, some of these other ones, based on if there's enough moisture and enough warmth, they can, they can, they'll start pretty quick. They won't have much of an issue uh, with uh, anything like that. Um, uh, if you want to get some basil seed, whether it's uh, a, a Italian lo- a leaf basil or cinnamon or Italian, whatever you want, you can go over to uh, jungseeds.com. Uh, that's J-U-N, uh, J-U-N-G-S-E-E-D.com. And uh, you can use coupon code 10 tg Two two and save ten percent on your order, as uh, they still have quite a bit of supply left in the herb category. Uh, so you can save ten percent on your order by going to Jung Seed and using ten TG. That's Tom Gary two two uh, at checkout. Um, so yeah, if you're not a patient person, Holly, you you might be just best to uh, buy the plant starts and put them in your your container at home. And and right. with that, you can still harvest. Like Basically, you transplant it, you can take a few leaves off that day. Yeah, you absolutely can. And like you said, if you're not patient, I remember when even we're, we're pretty patient people when we were growing rosemary from seed, we're like, what is going on? And then we... Is it still alive? We kind of backtracked and realized that it does take a while for it to germinate. And again, there's no shame in buying plant starts no. at all. Whatever you garden, you know, whatever We is, bought them. Yeah, whatever is um, easiest or ideal or just something that's – gardening is not supposed to be stressful. No, but it's so. nice to have that backup at the garden center that knowing that, hey, I don't have enough tomato plant or my peppers had a seed fail on them. I can. I, it's going to be a little expensive, but you can supplement what you couldn't grow or start or had failed at from the garden center. You can certainly do that, and some garden centers have – uh, have the advertising thing that you buy so much and we'll give you so many plants for free type of thing. So right. um, there's no shame in buying them. We've bought them. We continue to buy them. Uh, there's just some things that make more sense for us to buy than to grow or start ourselves indoors. Um, and not everything, I mean, people have problem with uh, lavender. Uh, we've never really had a difficulty with lavender. And people ask, what's the secret? And I say, we put the seeds in the soil and we covered it up and watered it. So I, I really don't know. <laughs> right. there, there was, I don't, uh, maybe you have, maybe you're from one of those lavender growing families and you have the magic lavender uh, finger. Well, let's talk, let's talk about something that's not quite so magical, which is mint. Is an herb. But it can be a very bad herb in the in the mindset of in the category of it's invasive. Right, mint is invasive, and so a lot of people do choose to grow it in containers. And if you grow a lot of mint, you use a lot of mint. It's, you might want to grow it in a container on your back porch, so you whether whether you're a, might um, want to explain what happens if you don't what the, the intensity here. Yeah, if you don't grow it in a container. And a lot of times, if you don't grow in a container away from your other things, whether you know you set the container next to your garden or not, you want to keep in mind that it's going to reproduce, it's going to become invasive, and it's going to spread. And it will choke out anything that's in its path. And it, it, it um, spreads by runners, such very similar to a raspberry plant or a creeping charlie. And in some instances... If if it would, if it gets too bad, you might have to resort to a harmful chemical in order to take control of what's going on. Absolutely, and that is, um, yeah, that's something that you need to to keep in mind when you're growing mint or any any sort of invasive type of plant. You want to keep that in mind is that you have to you have to be mindful of right, that. You right. have to be aware. And I forgot to put on here about dill. Okay. Yeah, dill can be on the invasive side. And the quick story is, uh, 10 years ago, we had a container or we had a container garden in front of the house. And then we had dill in it. Dill went to seed, never thought anything of it. We were granted because we rented at that point and still rent. Um, we could have a small 
five foot by 30 foot, 40 foot garden in the ground. And we did such, and the deal came back with great force over and over again because that little bit of spreading caused the seeds to a lot of seeds, and we were getting a half gallon a year of dill seed cleaned. Um, and we finally have it got it, we've gotten it under control. But in some states, in the United States, dill is labeled as an invasive species. Yeah, it, it is. It's um, it can it can get out of control quickly. So if you grow dill and it goes to seed, just know that you're going to have more dill there next year, and you might have to keep pulling it up. And dealing with it, but it does uh, bring some cool caterpillars in, so there's that. Well, another thing that's not so cool, Holly, is the Japanese beetles that's going to be invading your yard uh, this year with the uh, weevils and boars. Spring's here, times are warming up, and those Japanese beetles are ready to welcome you back to your back and front yards. Yeah, with spring just around the corner, it's time to start thinking about controlling those beetles and grubs in your yard. And how do we do that, Holly? Um, what better way to prevent those than destroying your garden from destroying your garden than by controlling them with while they are larvae with grub gone? It's an easy to apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. It's been developed by Phylum Bioproducts. A naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone, is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only scarab pests. And it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial pollinators and insects. And if you've already got those Japanese beetles flying around your yard, hey, Beetle Gone is the answer. It's an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly, yes, directly on your edible plants. Find out more about all the products they have available at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. And you can save money. They have a coupon code, and that coupon code is GARDENTALK10 to save 10% off your order at phylumbioproducts.com. Well, For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.